had a coach that was also the coach with the feature curler here with the CMB, and she was my personal coach. So she was kind of on the let's go to UVA train long before I was, and she found out I had good grades, and I don't think I've ever seen her more excited when I told her that you know I was applying to UVA. So uh, that's kind of what got the ball rolling. So Diane Gunnels, thank you for <laughs> inspiring me to join the Cavalier Marching Band. But I mean, after once I got in, and you know, once I, yeah, once I got in, that was it. I knew I was going to be in the band. That's pretty much the reason why I went to UVA. I feel like the CMB was my experience. I mean, yeah, everything else was kind of in the background. I mean, I obviously prioritized school and getting good grades, but. It's the first thing I tell people. People say, oh, you went to UVA? And I say, yes, I was a part of the Virginia. And it was awesome. So, it, I mean, it was a huge time commitment, but it never bothered me. That's just, that's just how it was. I don't think I remembered anything. Stepping out, that was one of the most crowded games we've ever had. It was sold out. It was Southern California. 67,000? Definition <laughs> was the definition of a sea of orange. I think the first time that I caught a glimpse of myself on the jumbotron was exciting and terrifying at the same time. Uh, definitely a cool moment. It's not every day you get to see yourself like projected on a huge screen. Uh, and I just remember thinking, like, dear God, do not drop the baton. <laughs> Diane always just told me to have fun. She never wanted me to feel like I had to be perfect. She never wanted me to feel like I had to be any kind of star, which I never wanted to be. Uh, I just, I just wanted to be. And I think I tried really hard to do that. You see the future. To entertain. I guess it would depend on if it were football season or if it were competition season. So football season, we just practice put in. We would do a little bit of outside work to coordinate the three of us. Uh, once it was me, Brittany Main, and Victoria Main, we we definitely had to spend a little bit of extra time making sure that we all had, were on the same page. And because we had to, we would have to wait and how the drill was going to play out and start to hear the music, how the band played it, before we could really put stuff together. So a lot of times, by the time that happened, there wouldn't be as much time to put what we need to put together for the field. So occasionally we would practice outside the hours, um, but you know maybe an hour here or there. For competition season, it was a lot different. The uh, competition season for baton boiling falls between January and July. And so once football season ended for a band, that's when we would really gear up. So I would say at least one day a week, two hours a day, we were in the gym somewhere practicing routines over and over. I always went in the morning because by the time classes and dinner and everything, the meetings were over at eight or nine or one, you can't get a spot on the basketball court at the AFC because every single first year in the world that owns basketballs there. So I would get up at, I don't know, 6.30 or 7 and go early in the morning and practice on the courts. The challenges are part of everything. And I know for me, my first year was really difficult in the band. And I think it's just because the band has always been really cohesive. And it was hard. I felt like it was hard to fit in because I didn't have that little niche of like, oh, you're part of the trumpets, or you're the drum line, you're the and you have your own little designated family. It's kind of just me and you know, a few other twirlers that we had. And so I do feel like sometimes I miss out on a little bit of the, like I said, the camaraderie. The first year was a little bit challenging, just trying to integrate and not be intimidated by everybody else. Um, that was definitely one thing. Uh, and then, I actually don't like attention. <laughs> so drawing attention to myself with flames and multiple shiny batons uh, was nerve-wracking at times. I mean, yes, my routines did not always go well with me. So having to recover and then dwelling on it after thinking, like, oh, that wasn't a good performance, or oh, I really messed up over there. Just realizing that we got to move on. There's always another show. They weren't necessarily looking at me anyway, so. I've done a lot of parades. I'm not the biggest fan of parades. They're okay. Paint the Town Orange was hard as a twirler because it was very densely populated. And people were standing literally right in front of me. There were 
trees right around you. Yeah. Your stores and restaurants are going to have a couple of trees beside you. So you're trying to twirl without hitting everything around you. So there's not much you can do. Paint the Town Orange was, I mean, it was exciting, energizing, but I almost would have rather just like walk through there. Woo! Like, go through. There were, I think there were more exciting things. I think band rehearsals, band practices were exciting. I mean, people would come from the community to watch. I would meet people all the time in Charlottesville that would say, Oh my gosh, you know, you're part of the band. We can't wait for fall to come around. As soon as we get a band out there, we can grab blankets, bring the kids hot chocolate, and wash your hands. You're great. And occasionally I would get recognized and say, I, people would say, I saw you at band practice. You know, you're one of the twirlers. Or people would see my shirt and say, You guys are awesome. We love you. And that was great. I, I mean, that's incredible. You know? It's just so community oriented. Yes, I did have an injury. Uh, and it was in a parade, this is why I don't like parades. <laughs> um, we were down, it was for the bowl game, and I'm pretty sure within the first 30 seconds of that parade, I busted some finger and there was blood all over my hand. I think we were there. And so my hand was bleeding and it was like physical blood at the scary times. And then it was all my costume. But I mean, it was a bowl game. It was the only opportunity I was ever gonna have to do that public performance down there. So I just kept twirling with blood on my skin, blood on my hand, probably on my face. Um, so yeah, uh, I did have that injury. And then I've also, I've had a couple other ones. Um, competitively, I had chronic tendonitis. That's something people don't know. I had chronic tendonitis for almost every year that I in my hamstring. So anytime you would do any kind of uh, gymnastic type move, so cartwheel or uh, stress on your flexibility in your hip area uh, would cause a decent amount of pain. So I would have to ice my leg all the time, which is an exciting thing. No one really cares, but <laughs> but that was kind of a problem. Um, it was kind of a downer competitively just because you can't you know, practice and compete to the level that you want to when you have something like that going back. I don't know if people know how so nervous I got. She always have she she has a very peaceful way about it. She's a very calming person. And so I would always have to talk to Diane for everything. Everything. Else. <laughs> I think sometimes I think back and I don't know how going out there and like that. I wouldn't say they necessarily retired, because you never know. And I still like it. 